The release candidate for React 19 is making some big changes to how suspenses work. Let's take a look at this suspense that's got two time-fetching components in it. In React 18, these two fetchers start fetching their data in parallel. But with React 19, the second fetcher doesn't even start until the first one is done. This means that the fetches happen one after the other in a serial manner, creating a waterfall effect instead of fetching in parallel like they did in 18. That's not a bug, though. It's actually a feature. The goal of the fix is to fix a performance issue in React 18 and to stop folks from creating lazy fetches like the one in this time fetcher component. In a lazy component, the fetches only start when the component renders. The React team thinks that the better way to handle fetching data is outside of the suspense and then to pass that promise onto the components that need it. This process is called hoisting. And if it sounds confusing now, don't worry. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how it works. We'll go through how suspenses work today in 18, how that same code behaves in 19, how to do that hoisting, and how to avoid those annoying waterfall fetches. Now, just a heads up, these changes in 19 aren't actually set in stone yet. There's been a lot of feedback from the community, and the React team is now holding off on the 19 release until they have a good fix. So for now, we'll assume that a good fix means reverting to the original React 18 model, but who knows? So we're going to keep an eye on this, and you'll definitely want to keep an eye on this if you're working on single-page applications. A huge shout-out to Robert Berlicki for his help on this video. Let's get right into it. In the GitHub repo associated with this project, which is a link in the description, of course, right down below, as always, and of course, all of the code is available to you for free, you get a bunch of different Beat projects. They're in two groups. One is called Simple, and the other is called Users. We're going to go through the Simple one first, and what I'm going to do is start with the Simple Starter, and then just go through and essentially create each one of these. The 19, 19 with the Use, and then 19 with the Use Hoisted. And then we'll get into users where I'll show you a more practically focused example. So we currently have React 18 installed in the simple starter. And this is the app.jsx file. Now right at the top here, we have the get time function. That's going to be a standard for our service. You give it an ID and it gives you back a promise that resolves in one second that tells you the ID plus the time when the request started. And that's how we're going to see when things are run in parallel, the times will be the same and when they're run in series, and you'll see the time shift by a second. Then we have a component, time fetcher. It's going to get the time and display it. And then in our app, we're going to do two of those time fetchers. So the first thing we need to do is bring in a suspense. And we're going to wrap these two time fetchers in a suspense. Now, those time fetchers are sibling time fetchers. Those mean those are in the same suspense. Okay, now let's go over that time fetcher. So we want to go and fetch the time. So what we would do is something like this. And we give it the ID. Now there are two things that are an issue with this approach. The first is that this promise is not stable. It means that when I do get time, I'm going to get a different promise every time I execute get time. So I need a memoization function. Now I just happen to have one right here. It's a very simple memoize function. You give it a function, and then it creates a new map locally. Then it returns a function where that function takes a bunch of arguments. It then creates a key with those arguments just by stringifying them. And then it looks to see if the result of that function, which in this case is going to be our promise, is in the cache. And if it is, then it just returns that. Otherwise, it invokes the function and then sets that to that particular key. So let's bring in that memoize. And we'll memoize get time. Now get time returns stable promises. That means that the first time that I invoke get time with a particular ID, I'm going to create a new promise. And next time I give it the same ID, I'm going to get back the memoized promise. Now, the next issue here is that we're not accessing this promise the right way. We are not awaiting it. We're not putting a then on it. We're not holding the state anywhere. Now, we actually don't need to do that because what you can do when you're inside of a suspense is if you are waiting on a promise and the promise hasn't yet fulfilled, then you just throw, and that tells React that you're not that the promise isn't ready and the component cannot be rendered at this time. So what we need to do is wrap this promise using a function that will go and throw if the promise is not fulfilled. Now I actually do happen to have one of those off the shelf. It's called wrap promise, and you give it a promise, and I'll show you how this works. 
but let me copy that and put that into our code. Now, as we go through this, I think you can see why I don't think a lot of folks use suspenses directly in React 18, because the use hook in React 19 makes doing this really, really easy, as we'll see. But this is how you need to do it in React 18. So you give wrap promise your promise, then you look to see what the state is. It starts off at pending, and then we put a then on that promise, and we look to see when we resolve properly and when we throw. And then if it resolves properly, we go into the success state, and then we store off whatever the result of that promise was in response. Then down here, we have a set of handlers that depending on the state key, give you different, so in the case of pending, we do that throw and tell React that we're not ready. In the case of an error, we throw the error, and then by default down at the bottom, we return the response. Now, the next thing we need to do is wrap this promise. And so we'll grab wrap promise and we'll wrap it around the promise that we return from get time. All right, so far, so good. So let's actually see if this works. All right, looks good. The reason it looks good is because the two time values are identical. If the two time values were shifted by a second, that would mean that these two time fetchers were actually run in series. Because these two times are the same, that means that both of the time fetchers were run in parallel. They were both started at the same time. Now, folks would like to see that same behavior in React 19. Let's actually see if it's there. To do that, we're going to move up to React 19. So we're going to move from React 18 to the release candidate, or RC. Now we'll run the app again. Now when I hit refresh, we can see that time one and time two are shifted by a second. Why is that? Well, if we look back at our get time, we do have a set time out in there that delays the response of get time by a second. So the time fetcher at time one started, then React 19 blocked on that time fetcher for that second. And then once it was completed, then time fetcher two with time two was executed and that created the second request, which gave you a starting time that was shifted by a second. If you want to see it a little bit longer, just go and change this to some longer value, like say five seconds. Now you just have to wait for 10 seconds for this to resolve and you get the five second delay between these two. This proves that in this case, there was a waterfall between time fetcher time one and time fetcher time two. Now, once we get that resolved, we get to see actually how much cooler using suspenses are in React 19. One big reason is we now have the use hook. So let's try this out. Now we no longer need to use this wrap promise. We can get rid of that. And now we can just put a use around get time. And we'll take it back to one second. Now the code's a lot shorter, but let's see if it's actually fixed anything. We'll refresh. We get an error. What's our error? Time is not a function. That's true. Time is now just a value. So use goes and takes the promise and then gives us back the value of the promise, which in this case is this string. So here we're trying to run it like a function because wrap promise gave us back a function. So we don't need to do that anymore. Let's hit save. And there we go. Now we do get that time shift by one second, which means that it's still run in series, but code's a whole lot cleaner. So once the suspense infrastructure is back to having that same behavior as React 18, this is going to be a joy to work with. Now, there actually is a way in 19 to make these two run at the same time. And that's just to simply put them in different suspenses. Now I've got two different suspenses. I run them both, and they both run at the same time. So there are definitely workarounds here. All right, let's take this back down to one suspense, because the next thing we want to try is hoisting. That's the other way to make this work in parallel. So what is hoisting? Well, hoisting is when you take the promise and you actually hoist it back into the parent of the suspended component. In this case, that would be app. So what we're going to do is we're going to get get time up in our app. So we'll get time one, we'll get time two, and then down in time fetcher, instead of sending an ID, we'll send it a promise. Time one promise and time two promise. Now up in my component. I'm just going to get a time promise and I'll use the time promise instead. Let's hit save, hit refresh, and now they both come in at the same time because up in the app, both of these requests are being made at the same time before you even start rendering out any JSX. 
And this is actually what the React team wants you to do. They want you to separate data fetching from data rendering. Data rendering goes in the suspended components. Data fetching happens somewhere else, in a parent component, in a store, or in a loader, but not in the suspended component. When you do the get time inside of time fetcher, you're doing what's called a lazy fetch. You're not actually making the fetch until the component renders. And that's actually the thing that I want to show you next is how you can create these unintentional waterfalls. So let's bring back time promise here, and that'll be the code that you'll see in GitHub. And let's move on to the user section. Okay, over in user starters, we got some data here that's in memory. We got a list of our users, and we have some orders for each user. Now we want the UI to show the user info as well as their orders for a particular user. So let's go take a look at how that's being done. So over in app.jsx, let's go down and start with our app. Now our app is going to invoke a user component with the ID of one. That user component gets the ID, somehow makes a request for that data, probably calling get user up at the top here. That's another memoized process returner that has a set timeout. This time it's a second again, and it returns a payload. That payload has the started time as well as the user. User then also has a subcomponent called orders. Orders takes an ID. And again, it does some kind of lookup. So in this case, it calls probably get orders, gives it that ID. And again, it takes about a second to return that data. So let's try this out. So we've got suspense. Let's use that. We'll put a nice div loading in there. So we'll call get user ID. Now that returns a promise, so we need to use use to unwrap that promise. Now the output of that is two things. It's the user as well as the started time. All right, looks good. Let's put the started time in here, and then we got the username down there, so I think we're good. Now we're going to do something similar with our orders. And that's going to give us back our orders as well as our started time. And let's try it out. Okay, we get our loading. And we see that our user request started at 53 seconds after, and then our orders started at 54 seconds after. So what that means is we have an unintentional waterfall. So what's actually happening here is inside of that suspense, we render user. User is blocking on get user right at the top there. So it's not actually rendering out anything until get user completes, which it takes a full second. Once it returns, then we render out orders. Just like the user component, the orders component is lazy. It doesn't make the request until it's actually invoked. So that means that only after get user actually completes do we actually start the request to orders. But maybe we can be clever about this. Let's try to use composition in our favor. So instead of invoking orders here, let's put it down inside of user. Let's see. All right. And then in here, just have children. We'll see, does this work? All right, we'll hit save, give it another try. And nope, do you still get the same one second offset, which means that the user request happened first. Then once that user request completed, then and only then we're able to start that orders request. And so you're still getting that same cascade. Now there's two options here. One is hoisting. Let's try that. So we get a user's promise and an order's promise. And we'll give user the user promise and we'll get orders the order promise. And let's see. That was a lot quicker. So now we're doing both of the requests right up front and passing the promise onto the suspended components. Now there's one more option here that kind of splits the difference between those two. And that's a prefetch option. Now we'll have to debate this in the comments as to whether you think this is a good idea or not. But let's go back to the IDs here. And instead of passing the promises, we just simply call get user and get orders to do the prefetch, to start the promise rolling. Remember that get user and get orders are memoized. That means that the first time you call get user one in this case, we're going to create the promise. 
And then the next time that you call get user one, oh, say up here on line 48, where you pass it in, it's going to get back the exact same promise. So we're essentially teleporting the promise between app and the get user here using external state. All right, let's hit save, try this again. And now they both start at exactly the same time because we prefetched them in the app. Now, not to get too mad about this, but you can see that the through line here has been using external state to handle these promises correctly. In this case, we're using memoization. There are other alternatives for that. For example, React Query is, uses an external store to hold its cache of all of the promises and their resolutions. That's why, for example, React Query didn't have a problem with the use effect double call because it's actually holding fetches in an external cache. And then you can make a request the first time in the component to go get that. But the next time that you make that request, you'll get back the cached promise. We're using memoization to do the same sort of thing. So that's why, for example, Tanner Lindsley and the React Query folks are so interested in making sure that we get this parallel behavior because you want to make sure that those calls to request that data are made as quickly as possible in the component lifecycle. All right, I know this has been kind of a heady in the weeds video. I strongly encourage you to play around with this project yourself, get comfortable with suspenses, particularly in single page applications, you're going to be seeing a lot of suspenses and they're going to be used for data loading. So making sure that you understand them is going to be critical. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to put that in the comment section right down below. I'll do my best to answer you. And hopefully we'll get some folks jumping in who know a lot more about this than I do to help out as well. Now, if you're into React and Next.js and advanced topics like this, please sign up for my newsletter on pronextjs.dev. That will give you access to two free tutorials. And I've been working my butt off on this course, and I can't wait to get it to you. It will be in your hands soon, I promise. In the meantime, of course, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.